Lightroom CC is an amazing tool for composite photographers and stock photographers. I have found this to be invaluable in my workflow and I wanted to show you how I use Lightroom CC, that's not classic, that's the cloud version, in keeping everything together and being able to pull from my stock from years of shooting. So let's just go over to my Lightroom CC catalog and I'll share with you my process and how you can use it. Now, one thing to note is that Lightroom CC works on both your browser and also on your computer. If you're like me and you have multiple computers, more than two, you'll find that with your membership, you need to log in and log out to use uh, Lightroom or any other CC product on more than two computers. I have found that on the browser, you can be logged in multiple times. So if I don't want to log out of one of my other computers, I can actually just go to lightroom.adobe.com and I can find all of my stock imagery here. I can actually add to my portfolio uh, so I can be on someone else's computer and add my files if I need to. And I can go through and order them and download them and whatever I need to do. Now my Lightroom catalog, if you have a look here, I've actually got 20 thousand photos in there over 20,000 photos in there I'm using the one terabyte membership and uh, I'm up to about 848 gig now that is high resolution raw files that I have in there now because I'm reaching my limit one of the things that I've decided to do from now on is to convert my images that are going into my Lightroom CC catalog to DNG. You can actually quarter the size of your images by doing that and I'll take you through that shortly. But before I do I just wanted to show you my catalog and how it all works. Now I actually have a it's, it's primarily for stock. So all of the images that I might come back to and I might use are in my Lightroom CC catalog. So you can see here that there's a deer collection uh, and I've got all of the raw deer collections here. Now, how did I find all of the deer in my library? Well, there's an awesome, awesome trick and it's the reason that I really love Lightroom CC is in the search. So if I go to my 20,000 photos here and I type in deer, it is looking for anything that looks like a deer. Now, sometimes it brings back things that aren't deers and that's okay. Uh, it's still learning. It's called Adobe Sensei and it is learning from images that have been uploaded to the cloud and that are in the stock library and it knows what a deer is based on what it looks like. So instead of me having to keyword everything, I never keyword anything, is I can just search. I can go through and I can actually select all of these photos, all of them are selected, 311 images. Now I can add them either to an existing album or create a new album called Deer. Now I've already got an album there, so I'm not going to do that right now. But what that does is then it moves everything that I've just searched for into a Deer album and I can put that wherever I want. So I've got this structured so that I can still find things without doing a search. So animals and then deer. We're working on some projects where I'm working with a whole lot of teams across the world for Christmas Wish and I've got a lot of illustrators, editors, photographers creating images as backdrops. So I've been able to, for example, go oh, they need deers. They've, they've contacted me. They said, we need some deers for our images. So I can go to my library. I can do this on the phone as well. Like, this is actually what I did. I went to Lightroom CC on the phone here and I typed in deer and then I did the search and then I put them into a folder right on the phone and then I shared that. And when I shared that, I made it so that they could be downloaded. I sent the link to the other editor that needed the deer and they could just go through straight away and find the image that they needed for their background. I can turn that sharing off any time I want. So what's amazing about it is that you can go in and do the same thing. 
So this is shared. If I go to sharing, you can see it's enabled. There's a link there. I allow downloads. You can have it so there's no downloads. Show comments and likes. So you can set this up as you need to. You can make a gallery and share it with family and friends or with the public. Um, that's up to you what you do with it. But the great thing about it is this shared library, as we load it up, this is what the other people see. They don't need to log into my account. They can see all of the images and they can go, oh, I need probably this one here. And they can click download and that will download a high resolution image. It will not download the raw. So keep in mind, if you're sharing in this way, it will download a JPEG and it will not download the raw. So if you want them to have access to the raw file, then you need to give that to them in another way. But that actually protects your images. If we go back over here, I've done the same thing with kangaroos. Uh, exactly the same thing. Search for kangaroos. There they are. Create an album. Share the album. They're ready for someone to go and grab what they need. If you're logged in, you can access everything online in your browser the same way that you would in the software that you download to your computer. So if you want the raw, for example, or the original image, click on download and you can click original, which gives you the raw or the JPEG. So that's what you do if you need to access that original file. Now this search is, you know, it's one of the most powerful things and it helps you to organize your library. But I'm finding, you know, if I need something and I don't even remember whether I've photographed it or not, a simple search will help me. If I type in castle and I need, I don't, I don't remember how many castles I've been to or where they are, I can go through and I can search. If you're looking for things that are just at a certain date, so if you're entering competitions and you know you can only enter images that are in the last, taken within the last two years, you can type in a date and search by date so that you can see the images that are taken within that date. Now you can see my Lightroom catalog, as I said, it's getting up to that one terabyte. Now I could buy more storage, but one of the things that you might want to consider is if you're loading images up into Lightroom CC and you want to keep them for a long time and not delete them, why not change them over to DNG? There's a few things to think about when you do this. Let's take you through it. So over here, I have an image that I have photographed on the new Nikon Z7. And the file size, the original file size is 60 meg from the RAW. It's pretty huge. And you take quite a few of these, load them up into Lightroom CC, it will take up a lot of space. So what you can do is if you want to load smaller files into Lightroom CC, it's also faster to upload, you can export them out of Lightroom Classic in the file size that you want. So you could import them into Lightroom Classic. You can then go to export and go to your export settings. You want to save this as a setting. So this is the area that you need to go to. The export settings should be uh, put it in a subfolder so you can find it afterwards. And I, I'm calling that subfolder DNG. I don't rename it. Keep it the same name for um, referencing and connecting to the original one. Now down here, image format. DNG, camera raw 7.1 and later is fine. JPEG preview, I've got it on medium size. It just helps them to show up quicker. But what I have ticked is use lossy compression. Now it does say that it might result in some quality loss. I have tried this and I've zoomed up and I've looked at the pixels and I've done adjusting with the raw and the DNG next to each other and really pushed and pulled the files and I haven't noticed any visible changes. If you've got something that you know you need everything to stay as high quality as possible, keep it as a raw. But if it's something like this, a bunch of takes from of water splashing that I know I'm just gonna use as either a brush or an overlay, I don't have a need to keep that as the original raw. The DNG, 
keeps the ability for me to really push and pull the file uh, and to change the exposure and the highlights and the shadows without losing detail. A JPEG would really severely hinder that. So I don't recommend turning it into a JPEG unless you know you're definitely not really going to change the file at all. If you still want to be able to adjust that file like you would in RAW, change it to this, click on lossy compression. Don't embed the original RAW, that'll just keep the file size big. Then everything else just leave unticked and export. I'm going to show you the difference in size. So now we've got the DNG file and if I get the information there, this one is now 14.1 meg. The original was 60 meg. So imagine if I do that with all of my water splashes, I'm making the size a quarter of what it would have been. So it's uploading quicker and it's taking up less space on my cloud, which means that I can save more images there. So are there any downsides to Lightroom CC? When would you use it? When would you not? I used to be a wedding photographer and a portrait photographer. I wouldn't use this for weddings. Now, I don't know, there, there's probably some people using this for weddings and sharing edits across the internet and having other people edit for them. And that's a great way to do it. That could work well, but you would need to continue to delete the files unless you pay for a lot of storage. Shooting, you know, 4,000 images in a wedding and then uploading them, unless you've got a really fast connection, it's not really viable. But for this, if you are a stock photographer, if you are a composite photographer, if you need to have access to files and images that you collect over the years and you wanna always go back to them and use them for something, this is phenomenal. This is actually a lifesaver. You can back this up as well. So there is a program that allows you to download everything back onto your computer. So I, I do recommend if you are doing the type of work that I'm doing or you're a stock photographer, whatever it is, you need to share images with other people. You really should give this a go. You can edit on the move. You can edit on your phone. You can take photos on your phone. I have a category here for, I used to have an iPhone. So I have iPhone stock here, things that I've collected just using the iPhone that I can use in my composite. Skies are a great example of that. And now that I've got a Hawaii or Wowie P20 Pro phone, I've now got a P20 stock file and I've got all my images in here. So I can shoot them on Lightroom on the application on here and I can take the photos and they directly upload and then they're shareable on all of my devices. This is a fantastic way to keep everything in one place. I used to have all of my stock on a USB-C um, SSD drive and I would carry that around with me and I'd always have to back it up. And sometimes I'd download to a different computer and then I wouldn't know if I'd backed it up. I was getting duplicates all over the place. So I decided to get everything up into the Lightroom cloud and now it's there on any computer. So I can upload from any computer to the cloud. Originally, my stock collection of nearly one terabyte did take some time to upload. I did take it to somewhere where there was a faster upload connection to make that happen. So a consideration to get your whole stock library up there is you need to either have a fast connection or be willing to wait. But once it's up there, I'm in Australia, we're on MBN, it's not fast. 20 to 30 meg download and upload speed is only about 10 meg per second. It's not fast, but if I do a shoot, I come back, I load it up, I let it run. It doesn't take up too much bandwidth and it goes up onto the server within a few hours or a couple of hours, depending on how many images that I have. So it's definitely doable. When I'm away, I know everything's backed up straight away. As soon as I've loaded it on there, it's on the cloud and I'm not going to lose it. So yeah, there are great advantages to using Lightroom CC. I know it's different. I know it's kind of like really confusing between Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC. Sometimes people aren't aware of the differences, 
but you're working on the cloud, you're working on line and that is a big difference if you want to have everywhere access to your images and to be able to search using the Adobe Sensei search options. I hope this has helped you because I know a lot of people have been confused about this whole Lightroom CC thing, especially when Lightroom, the original one, was changed to Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC used to be Lightroom Classic. Anyway, it's confusing, but I hope that this has helped you in understanding what the power of Lightroom CC and what it can do for you in your photography. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and check out storyart.education. That's storyart.education for a bunch of other tutorials and things that will help you in your compositing journey.